<laughs> Good evening. We welcome you to the memorial celebration of Greg Winter's life and the place where he died. We commemorate this place tonight. We thank you for your presence. I will invite you to join me for an attitude of prayer at this time. Our holy and loving God, we give you thanks for your blessings, for who you are in our lives, that you love and care for us. We thank you for the blessings that we have and we ask your forgiveness for taking so much for granted. As we celebrate and commemorate tonight, Greg Winters, we thank you for his willingness to lay down his life in order to protect this city and community from the tyranny of violence that took his life. We thank you for watching out for his family through these many 25 years, caring for them and watching over them. We thank you for all these who are here this evening as we celebrate and commemorate tonight, may you surround us with loving arms, care for us, and keep the men and women in public safety wherever they serve in your loving arms as well and restore them to their families at the end of their watch. We give you thanks for the break in the weather. We'd like a little decrease in the wind level. We are grateful it's not raining. Thank you, Lord. We ask that you will continue to bless us now and in the hours ahead. We give you thanks and praise and ask in your holy name. Amen. Would you please remain standing in silence for the posting of the colors and the singing of the national anthem by Brian Wolf. Can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there oh say does that star-spangled Banner yet wave o'er oh, the land of the free and the home of the brave. Thanks to Brian Wolf from the Thanks to Brian Wolf from the Marion County Sheriff's Department. I am Rick Castle, the state FOP chaplain and a chaplain for the Speedway Police Department. I'm pleased to be honored to be here tonight. Would like to introduce and welcome to the podium at this time Mayor Dennis Tyler.
Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and thank you so much for being here this evening to remember and memorialize Officer Winters and his call to duty and to Molly and to the family and Officer Winters. Our prayers and our blessings are with each and every one of the family members here. And you look around here tonight, you see a lot of men and women in blue and brown. And I can tell you from spending many, many years in the service myself is that in times like this and 24 hours a day, 365 years, we're all brothers and sisters. And what happens to one happens to all of us. And we never forget and we always honor and we always remember. And to the citizens that are here this evening, take the time sometime to stop at Policeman's Park or Fireman's Park or stop at the Fallen Heroes Memorial Bridge and take an opportunity to look and remember all of the brave brothers and sisters that took that last 911 call for our community. But from the office of the mayor of the city of Muncie, it's my great honor to memorialize Officer's Winter, Officer Winters and his call to duty and service with a proclamation. Whereas the city of Muncie, Indiana suffered an unfathomable loss 25 years ago of an honorable, hardworking Muncie police officer, Greg William Winters. And whereas Officer Greg Winters succumbed to gunshot wounds on January 8, 1991, after being shot by a prisoner on December 28, 1990, approximately one eighth of a mile from the Delaware County Jail. And whereas there is no greater sacrifice that an officer can make for their community than to give their life, shaking the very soul of the community, our government, and the very freedoms these officers have sworn to protect. And whereas Officer Winters is survived by his two sons, Kyle and Brock, his brother, Terry Winters, who also served on the Muncie Police Department, and his wife, Molly, who in the wake of her husband's death has become an advocate and an activist for survivors of other law enforcement officers have been killed in the line of duty. And whereas friends, family members, and community members have gathered on the day of his death to remind us of what his Kyle, son Kyle said to him on his last day. I love you, Daddy. You have good dreams. Now therefore I, the Honorable Dennis Tyler, Mayor of this great city of Muncie, Indiana, do recognize and remember January 8, 2016, as the 25th anniversary of our fallen brother, Officer Greg William Winters. By this action, let it be known that I, as mayor of this great city of Muncie, Indiana, urge all citizens to remember the heroic actions of Officer Greg Winters and reaffirm our commitment to his family that we will never forget. Until we see him again, we want to say, we love you, Officer Winters, you have good dreams. In witness whereof, I have hereunto set my hand and caused the seal of the city of Muncie to be affixed on this eighth day of January, 2016. Dennis Tyler, Mayor of the City of Muncie. Thank you all so much. God bless you for being here this evening. This time we invite Muncie Police Chief Steve Stewart to the microphone. Good evening. I'm truly blessed to uh, have this opportunity. There's my notes. I'm truly blessed to have this opportunity to uh, speak to you tonight about a friend of mine, Greg Winters. Greg was taken us, taken away from us, way too soon. The pain and the hurt. 
I can't even begin to tell you how deeply Greg's death hurt our department. And I know the pain and the hurt to Greg's family has got to be tenfold for us. It does hurt foremost for the family, but also his friends, our police department, this great city of Muncie. Greg was an asset to all of us. You know, the success of our lives will not be judged by how we live or die, but what we leave behind is our legacy. Greg left a beautiful wife, Molly, to care for their children, Brock and Kyle. And for those spouses that would lose their loved ones in the same manner in which we lost Greg, Molly's work with cops is unparalleled in the United States. Unparalleled, Molly. I appreciate her dedication to law enforcement across this country. Greg also left two children, Kyle and Brock. It's wonderful to see that these young men have graduated from college and have become good citizens as they pursue the American dream, but without their father. So sad. We're going to celebrate Greg's life this weekend. 25 years ago, has come and gone so fast but we refuse to forget the sacrifice that he made. It is through this sacrifice that makes our bond that much tighter, that brings us that much closer, and defines us as a department. It's why we do what we do, not just us as a police officers, but what his family does also. Thank you. son of Greg Winters, Brock is going to come and share with us now. is yielded to letting his mother speak. Would you welcome Molly Winters, past national president of the COPS organization and office manager for the local FOP in Indianapolis and a wonderful, wonderful woman, the mother of these two boys, and somebody who has been instrumental for the last 25 years in helping other survivors deal with their grief. Please welcome Molly Winters. Brock was going to share with you tonight, but um, we've had a change of plans, and I'd like to share with you on behalf of all three of us. First of all, I'd like to thank Mayor Tyler, Chief Stewart, Chief Bell, the survivors, officers, firefighters, our community members, and our friends on behalf of the entire Keith and Winters families. We thank you for being here to honor us and Greg tonight. As we stand before you and remember Greg tonight, we wonder just exactly what we should share with you. Trying to condense the past 25 years of life without Greg and to a few minutes of time really was not an easy thing to do. Greg was the youngest of three boys. Being the baby of the family, he would always tease and taunt his older brothers Steve and Terry, until they would get in trouble for picking on him, the baby. He had a close relationship with his parents and he admired them for the lessons of life they taught him. Greg and I knew each other in school, but we didn't date until after high school. 
Our first date was October 12, 1981. We were engaged eight weeks later. We knew from the beginning we would share the rest of our lives together. Greg was a good man who believed in putting his family above all others. He believed in the code of honor and integrity. integrity. He believed in living each day to its fullest, even if that meant laying on the couch in your pajamas all day long. On July 21st, 1984, Greg and I were married. We stood before God and promised to love one another and cherish one another, to honor one another, to stand by one another through the good times and the bad times. We had great admiration, respect, and love for each other. We were the proud parents of two wonderful boys, and we had a list of things in life we wanted to share with our children. We knew we would always be together until death do us part. I'll never forget the knock on the door, December 28, 1990. I knew right away something was wrong with Greg. Upon answering the door, I was told Greg was shot in the head and I needed to get to him right away. When I got to Ball Hospital, the doctor told me there was nothing they could do for Greg and he would have to be transported to Methodist Hospital in Indianapolis. For 11 days we prayed, we bargained, we begged God to give us that one miracle. Please God, let Greg wake up, let him be okay. Let him come home. In our hearts, though, we knew. We knew Greg would never come home again. On January 8, 1991, I held Greg's hand as a single tear ran down his face, and he took his last breath. I thought my life was over. My Greg was gone. Kyle and Brock's daddy was gone. Barely and Zeke's youngest son, the little brother to Terry and Steve, gone. An uncle, a brother-in-law, a friend who is loved and admired by all, was gone. How could life be so cruel? How were we going to make it without Greg? I'd like to say that we coped well, but we didn't. It took time for us to heal. We had to learn to live each day without Greg and realize that the memories of him were all we would ever have for the rest of our lives. We learned for the rest of our lives there were times we'd think of Greg and laugh. There'd be times we would cry. And there are definitely times we are angry. But in life and in death, Greg has taught us all some of life's lessons. As a community, you joined us in our grief. You paid your respects. You sent notes of sympathy. You stood along the funeral procession route and you waved your American flags. 25 years later, you stand at this sacred memorial. We thank you for remembering Greg and for standing here with us tonight at this very place where Greg gave his life. A memorial was built by a young man who never knew Greg who wasn't even alive when Greg gave his life. I thank you, Aaron, for that. As co-workers, police officers, firefighters, you reached out to us. Maybe you mowed our lawn, took the boys to a ball game, shared stories with us about Greg. You felt the loss of a brother who stood shoulder to shoulder with you on that thin blue line. That thin blue line that is made up of the blood, sweat, and tears you all shed as you stand together fighting the evil of our society. As we honor and salute all officers in public safety tomorrow for the National Law Enforcement Appreciation Day, we thank you. As a family and friends, you grieved with us. You share the emptiness we have. You have a hole in your heart that will never close. For we will never have closure, but we will have each other and our own special bonds with Bray that will never go away. 
Some of you here tonight never had the pleasure of knowing Greg, but through his death, you are now a part of our family. You encourage us on those dark days. You hold our hands as we face each and every milestone, and you ensure that Greg will never be forgotten. Years ago, I made a promise to Greg to live each day to its fullest. It was hard, but I truly felt that out of something bad comes something good. I knew if I would just open my heart and listen, God would tell me the plan for the boys and I. Tonight, you see the good that has come out of the bad. As the boys and I have shared our story of great sacrifice, we have met many survivors, police officers, dignitaries throughout the United States, and we have been blessed with made many lifelong friendships. Tonight, these friends, you are our family. Greg taught me a lesson about life all those years ago. I must do my part to make a difference in this world. I started the Indiana Concerns of Police Survivors and I was national president for two years. Proud of what I'd done by the influence of Greg and some of his strong characteristics, loyalty, integrity, doing the right thing. I have fought for changes on the state and national levels for the betterment of all of our survivors and our public safety officers. 25 years ago, I would have never stood in front of you sharing with you about Greg or Kyle or Brock, for Greg emulated his big brother and becoming a police officer was all he ever wanted to do. He wanted to spend his whole career working the streets because that's where he knew he would make a difference. He said, who you are and what you stand for will define your legacy. Greg's legacy is a man who is honest, sincere, loving, and loyal. Greg's wishes for Kyle and Brock was for them to grow up to be strong, confident, loving, caring, and sincere men. He wanted them to know that doing the right thing is not always the easiest thing but it's still the right thing. That healing can be found in tears, but also in laughter. That when adversity comes, when pain comes, you must face it head on so you can heal from it. And love doesn't end with death, but love will live on forever. Kyle and Brock, your daddy will live on forever in your hearts. If Greg were here tonight, he would tell you to go home. Tell your family you love them. Take time out of your busy lives and call your parents, your siblings, your friends, and tell them what they mean to you. Hold your children tight. Kiss your spouse and tell them they are your world. I believe he would tell you to laugh as often as possible. Laughter won't make your problems go away, but it sure does make them easier to bear. I believe he would tell you to stand for something. Honesty, integrity, honor, and always hold your head high. You should make a plan and know what your legacy will be and live each day to its fullest. Don't get stuck on the past, the would'ves, could'ves, should'ves. Instead, concentrate on life today and where you can make a difference. To all of the officers, I, be <clears throat> excuse me, I believe Greg would be proud and honored to see you here tonight sharing in this moment. He would tell you to be proud of the badge you wear and the oath you have taken. Wear it honorably for who you are when you put that uniform on is also as important as who you are when you take that uniform off. Grief is an unknown and we all handle it in many different ways. But we're not here to mourn Greg. We're not here to mourn Greg William Winters. We're here to celebrate his life, his service, and his sacrifice of a little brother, of a youngest son, of a husband, of a dad, and of the man he was. Because we have been blessed to feel love 
and pain, we must now find the courage to move forward. With each passing anniversary date, new year, birthday, or special day spent without Greg, we will thank him for all that he has taught us through his life and his death. Because of Greg, we all hug a little tighter, we cry a little longer, and we laugh a whole lot louder. Love is holding on to memories only the heart can see. To further honor Greg Winters and the life that he lived, and the way that he lived it, Brian Wolf is going to share with us his rendition of The Thin Blue Line. On a cold December day, 1990, nearly done, Greg came out for his shift and took another routine run. Little did we know that it was his final call. Eleven days full of prayer, and our hero he did fall. We stand unified together with our loved ones on our heart. Each one we miss so dearly, our world was torn apart. A misty-eyed but steadfast, refusing to resign. Standing shoulder to shoulder on the thin blue line. We stand unified together with our loved ones on our heart. Each one we miss so dearly, a world was torn apart. Misty eyed but steadfast. Refusing to resign Standing shoulder to shoulder On the thin blue line Oh, all lives matter That's precisely why we're here Misty-eyed but steadfast Refusing to resign Standing shoulder to shoulder on the thin blue line.
This is for Greg William Winters. May this lantern rise to the heavens and shine with you through all eternity. We miss you every day. We love you, Dad. This concludes our ceremony. As we go, may we go in peace. May we go with love for the Winters family, for our officers who work so hard to protect us, for our public servants, and for all that they do in our community. We thank you for your presence. Please be safe going home. May you go with God's peace. May you know that deep in your heart, these men and women of public service will do everything that they can and may you rededicate yourselves to always remember those who have paid the ultimate sacrifice and to do the utmost to protect and care for and love the survivors who are left behind may you go in peace amen <laughs>